Welcome everyone to another Goblins vs. Gnomes Legendary Edition! Alrighty then. So, they did the card dump as we were expecting. We have a release date, December the 8th. This is going to be amazing. So, uh, over the next few episodes, we're going to be doing 10 cards until we are done. We're going to start off with all the legendaries that were dumped in the past two days. So, I'm actually going to put on my glasses right now. Just because this is that spectacular that I really want to look at what we've got here. Alright. Yes, I'm blind as a bat. Deal with it. Okay. So, without further ado, let's kick this off. The Flame Leviathan, yes, pardon me for the whatever, but did the best I could on short notice, folks. Alright. So, Flame Leviathan, it's a mage. It's a mech. Alright, when you draw this, deal two damage to all characters. Okay, I like this because it's basically a war golem with a interesting thing. Now this could backfire if Nerubian eggs are still popular. Keep that in mind. Um, any kind of enrage mechanic that has three life, this is really dangerous for. Um, so that's something there, but I like it. It does kind of tell your opponents, hey, I've got this. So they're going to have to, you know, pray they get what they need, like a big game hunter to take care of this or, or some sort of hard removal. But because it's mage, I mean, polymorph exists. Would I polymorph this? Depending on the board state, most likely, <laughs> you know? Um, if I'm if I'm a mage and I know they're playing Flame Leviathan, I would polymorph this. Other hard removals, hunters still have a ton of tools, so I mean, this is... It's a threat, don't get me wrong. It's something I think mages have needed for some time, like a big minion that just goes... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool kind of um, aggro tool, but I don't know if you'd really want to use this in aggro, considering drawing it could wipe your own board. So we'll have to see. Uh, definitely have to see on that. But definitely this is really cool. I like it. A lot of fun things you could do with this. Um, if you have duplicate down, you play this and it gets killed, it goes back to your hand, so you get two of them, so you can just go, oh, no, I'm just going to keep chugging them out, man. So, I mean, that, that that's kind of interesting. Um, I like the cost of it, I think that's really cool. But now, here's the question, would I play this over Archmage, since it's similar mana cost? Um, that's a really tough call, it all depends on the deck design. So, we'll have to see, we will definitely have to see. Um, but I like the card, I think it's a very solid card, it's going to be fun. All right, Malganus, yes, the one that people didn't vote for because they wanted the most craptacular paladin card ever. Which, by the way, we'll be reviewing that at the very end, where it belongs. Okay, so Malganus, nine mana. All right, so now you're competing with Jaraxxus, obviously. Your other demons have a plus two, plus two. Your hero is immune. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this is a great thing to get with Void Color, but Demon decks are a very strong possibility. A very strong possibility. Void Callers can get this guy out early. It, it will lock down the game. All right, unless they've got that hard removal. Priest go, oh, thanks, fuck off, boom. But others don't, all right? So this will definitely lock down the game. Uh, you can silence it. All right, let's keep that in mind. Silence him, sure, but guess what? It's still a 9-7 body. It dies to BGH. Let's not forget about this. It does die. But if you don't have it, if you don't have those options, and this comes out early because of Void Color, you're pretty screwed. Really, you are. Um, and I like that. Interestingly enough, though, go Jaraxxus, then you go Malganus, what are, what's your opponent really going to do at that point, you know? Because by that point, they've used almost all the removals before you get your Jaraxxus out. Then you play Malganus, and nothing you do can actually hurt him. So Malganus acts like a super taunt at that point. Because they're going to have to trade to get rid of this guy. And that's just really nasty. So, I like that. 
Trade Prince Gallywix. Now, I, I'm going to take a little pause here. All these cards were actually seen before this release. Um, good friend of mine, Noxious, who, you know, I do the show Mechatorx Workshop with, actually was stumbled across a whole bunch of these cards. Actually, all the cards we're showing today, except for Boulevard. And... You know, post it up on Reddit for people to see, and everybody said, oh, it's fake, oh, you're clickbait, oh, blah, 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 you just want attention, blah, blah, blah. Don't you feel dumb. Don't you feel dumb. This is why I generally do not care for Reddit. I equate it with 4chan in level of intellectual maturity. All right. So, Trade Prince Gallywix. Six mana and a five eight. Alright, so this is not like the strongest you could get on six mana, but it's still pretty damn good. Alright, whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain a copy of it and give them a coin. Give them a coin. Not you. Them a coin. So, why is that good? Why am I giving my opponents this why am i giving them more mana well if you haven't noticed there's a lot of cards that actually punish for having bigger hand sizes so that's where that plays in um and i like that uh interestingly enough in the control matchups if you play this down it gets really interesting so i like that uh five eight body really cool as a tempo trader it's actually really good it's really good. The only problem I have with it is that coin counts as mana. It does not count as something that will trigger, which as a matter of fact, here, let's uh, go ahead and show that. Uh, does not trigger Gallywix himself. Okay, so it's not like your standard coin. But it's quite interesting. It really is quite interesting. So, but for tempo-wise, a 5-8 on 6, not all that spectacular, but it will handle a lot of shit and persist. So, it's definitely a great tempo card. Alright, so let's go to Vol'jin! Yes! The new War Chief of the Horde. I, I say new, but, you know, we've all known he's the War Chief ever since, you know, Siege of Ogremar, but, you know, that's been out for a long time. Alright, so, five mana! Alright, cool. It's kind of competing with a few things, but that's okay. Battle cry, swap health with another minion. So now I look at this and I go, okay, I'm never playing Vulture on Curve. You never play this on an empty board because you get like shitted. But, but, oh, you play Ysera. No, man, you don't. I now be a 612. Get wrecked. I can hear him saying that, you know, in that trollish Jamaican voice. Um, I like this. It really does um, some amazing things if you think about it. It punishes like high health minions that a lot of people try to build up on. Uh, and you can get some really great value on it. So that that's really fun. Um, in the mirror match, this is really punishing. Oh, you've got a 4-7, huh? <laughs> More like a 4-2. So, yeah, that's great value. Um, let's say you're up against a handlock. Oh, turn four comes down. You play your Twilight Drake. It's like a four nine, which I think is like one of the highest you can get it to. Okay, that's cool. You play a four nine. I'm going to play Vol'jin and now be a six nine, and you can have that four two that you could trade into me, and I'll just recoup most of the loss anyway, and I'm still going to have a solid tempo trader. So, thanks. I like Vol'jin. I think this is going to be a really creative card. Uh, against aggro decks, he's absolutely garbage, to be perfectly honest with you. So, keep that in mind. Um, but definitely, this is going to be a great tool for Priest. Alright. Malorn. 7 mana for a 9-7. That's some huge fucking power right there. And it's a beast. Drew the Fang says, thank you. All right, so also Drew the Claw, both minions are beasts too, so you could actually go Drew the Claw, five, boom, go in top mode, play Drew to the Fang, boom, seven, seven, and then on turn seven, drop Malorn. That's a huge power swing 
four druids. That's the bam. No, I'm going to beat the living crap out of you. Deal with it. It's pretty much what it is. Uh, Death Rattle. Shuffle this minion into your deck. So even if you kill this fucker, he still goes back into your deck. I mean, oh, you only run one copy of Big Game Hunter? Sucks to be you. That's really nasty. That is really nasty. So you cannot fatigue a druid because he's always going to get this out. It's pretty fucking disgusting. I like this. I think it's great. Also, because it's a beast, I want to see if Web Spinner will pull this. It <laughs> because there's never been any other classes with beasts, and now we're getting other beasts. So will Web Spinner pull this out? If Web Spinner pulls, puts this in your hand, hunters are going, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, that'd be just such great synergy. Oh my god, that's just hilarious. Alright. Next up is the Iron Juggernaut. A mech. It's six mana for a 6-5. Okay, you're going. Well, that's kind of okay, I guess, stat-wise. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. But now read the battle cry. <laughs> Shuffle a mine into your opponent's deck. When drawn, it explodes for 10 damage. Now, initially when I saw this, like, oh my god, this literally skips their draw phase. No, this was FAQ'd. It does not skip the draw phase. So if they draw the mine, it explodes in their face, and they draw another card. So, at least they get that. Now, I like this, because it's a big burst. Something that you had to do some convoluted shit with um, uh, Warriors to begin with, and then they ended up nerfing the crap out of it, thank God. But this is cool, because it's RNG on when that burst actually happens, alright? So... This is kind of almost a win more card. Would I play this in Control Warrior? You're damn right I'd play this in Control Warrior. I'd play this in every Warrior build. Are you kidding me? Just for the chance of them drawing to their death? Yeah. You know? I'd love this. If I versus a Rogue and Gadget Sand comes down, guess what I'm doing? I'm playing this. Alright? Warriors have never really had anything that could deal with a uh, miracle all that well other than I'm just going to keep armoring and you know try to come up with options later on with bigger minions to trade this that and the other so this actually says yeah go ahead draw take that 10 damage I'll sit here and wait love this for that so nice um, but this definitely punishes uh, decks that use uh, certain things to get like a lot of cards um, in one fell burst, uh, case in point. Hunters using um, Starving Buzzard, though not as seen much these days because they changed it to five mana, which is completely abusive considering. But let's say you're doing some interesting stuff with a Gadget Sand or doing some interesting stuff with, say, an Acolyte of Pain. Now you're actually drawing to your death in many ways. This against Handlock. The moment this comes down, Handlock's going, yeah, I'm going to stop drawing now. I think I'm going to be good. All right. So this actually can really be punishing to Handlock in so many ways. Even if he you was know, like, you faced Jaraxxus. Your next draw, boom, five off your life. You are not a happy Jaraxxus. You're basically down five, five to death. You know, it's like, fuck off. You know, you are not a happy Jaraxxus at that point. So I like that. And just so you guys can see, here's the burrowing mine. It's kind of nifty. I like it. <laughs> All right. Now, the next card is probably the worst legendary they have come out with. And that that's fair. There's always going to be some really bad legendaries. However, the fact that it's a class legendary is really disturbing to me. Bolivar. Now, a lot of people are going, oh, Boulevard is kind of, you know, like a win more card, you know. Okay, Boulevard works on the principle that you can't play around certain things. In this case, silence. All right? So, here's the thing. Boulevard, five mana. You want this in your early game. Like, if you get this in, uh, on your draw, you keep it. 
just simply due to the fact that you'll get value this way. Every time your token dies, boom, this automatically gets more and more value. Uh, Muster for Battle gives this guy great value. And I mean, it's really freaking awesome, right? Problem is, the moment he comes down, Silent says, oh, hey, that's an nifty one seven. So, I mean, in all honesty, if you get this early on and you hold on to it till after you play Tyrion, you know, let them use their silences and stuff till the late, and then you throw this guy down, then you get this huge freaking minion. What are they going to do? It's got seven life. They're going to have to trade, like, multiple things into it, so it gets value there. But it's definitely, you know, once Tyrion's gone, you play this, and you can do something else with it. Which, by the way, if you haven't figured this out, Blessing of Kings gets really disgusting. Alright, so you're talking about 11 life, plus God only knows how much. Alright, so it could work in that scenario. But it, it's another off mana curve play. And it's kind of sad, you know, because that's... It, Paladins were known for, you know, just curving out. And here you got a card that says, fuck your curve. I'm, I'm going to go over here. Now, you could play it on curve and hope for good, but even in an aggro deck, this is not going to pan out well because silence exists. So the only true value in it is so late game that I don't think it's affecting this is all that great. But it could be. It could be. You know, rather than going for the fatigue, they go for the, heck, get fucked play. So, it's possible. It really is. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the worst legendary in the game. I can think of others. But it's definitely kind of underwhelming. It's very anticlimactic uh, for what we were expecting. You know, here's a guy who literally sacrificed himself to make sure that, you know, the undead stay in check. And this is what they do to him. I don't know. I felt disappointed in it. But, that's okay. It's only a card game, folks. So, that's all the new legendaries and their little subset cards. They're really interesting. I really like them. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing uh, 10 more cards here very soon. So, stay tuned. Keep watching. Uh, Shiv saying thank you very much. And good luck.